All right, one question that's been asked is how we simulate a modulated signal in Cadence. And I'm going to show you uh, a simple way. Now, Cadence does have built-in tools that allow you to create uh, modulated signals and run them through your amplifiers. Uh, but I generally still like to work in MATLAB because it has a significantly higher uh, signal processing capabilities. So what I'm going to do here is use MATLAB to generate a vector file that can be uh, then loaded into uh, Cadence and simulated uh, as a VPWLF. Now, I'll also note that Cadence does have a MATLAB plugin uh, as well that you can get working. Uh, but uh, again, uh, that involves uh, having uh, somebody from your IT organization help you set it up. And if you don't have that, uh, then this is a tried and true method. So here what I have is MATLAB code that is generating uh, a, an 802.11BE uh, SU, uh, single user packet. Uh, so with a bandwidth of 320 megahertz uh, and uh, MCS uh, 12, I believe this uh, corresponds to a 1K QAM. We could change this to 13 to get 4K QAM. Uh, won't matter for the uh, purposes of this. Uh, I resample the baseband uh, modem uh, rate, which is coming out at 320 megahertz, uh, up to uh, a rate of 6.4 gigahertz uh, through some signal processing. Uh, and then I oversample the 6.4 gigahertz by a factor of 20 uh, so that we have uh, a nice, uh, reasonable looking uh, uh, wave coming out of the signal, out of the uh, MATLAB. Uh, at the end of this, I make a vector, uh, which consists of a time in the left column of the vector and a uh, voltage reading in the right column of the vector. Normally, I normalize this to a value of one uh, so that the maximum value is a value of one. And then later on uh, in our next video, I'll show you how to import this into Cadence and uh, to scale this if you need to. Uh, we uh, do a simple uh, fprintf in MATLAB. Uh, and we just need to make sure that in our fprintf we have a high enough resolution uh, to cover the timestamp and the voltage stamp that we're looking uh, at. Uh, our timestamp goes out to uh, picoseconds, so I have uh, the proper formatting for the timestamp, and I want to go out to nanovolts uh, for the uh, for the voltage stamp, uh, and so I have that proper uh, properly set as well. All right, so let's run this thing and kind of look at what happens. We can talk about the uh, resampling uh, later, uh, but the reason that we do the resampling uh, is if I were to just take the raw modem rate uh, and sample it onto the uh, carrier uh, frequency, uh, then I would get the power spectral density shown uh, where my cursor is here uh, on the left, uh, and you'd see the signal uh, the main lobe of the signal uh, centered at 6.4 gigahertz, uh, but you'd also see these image frequencies uh, that are one over the sampling rate uh, offset from the uh, center frequency. Now, the original signal uh, looks like this. So you can see a nice uh, tight main lobe, and uh, I've resampled it uh, a couple of different times, uh, and you can see the resampling is fairly ideal uh, with a fairly large uh, signal to noise ratio. The resampling to the RF frequency has to rate match the carrier frequency. Uh, otherwise, we'll uh, get those uh, image frequencies. And so here, what I've done is just interpolated the uh, signal up to uh, the, uh, the uh, RF carrier frequency. And you can see now that the images are pressed out to plus or minus an offset equal to the RF carrier frequency. If we Look at the time domain signal. This is the actual vector that we're uh, going to be uh, putting into the file. And if we kind of zoom in on this, we'll see a modulated RF carrier frequency. So I'm just arbitrarily zooming in. And here you can see the carrier frequency, and you can see that it's got some modulation uh, that it's writing on.
or that's writing on top of it. All right, and then this, uh, the, this last part is going to create that vector file, and the vector file uh, simply has to have this format. All right, so here's our vector file, and what you'll see is there are two columns in the vector file. Uh, the left column is a timestamp, and the right column is a voltage stamp. And if you scroll through, uh, it should just maintain this two-column format all the way through. Uh, and the only thing that, uh, that matters is that time has to be increasing uh, with each row. Uh, if time is not increasing with each row, uh, then, uh, then the uh, Cadence Simulator uh, won't like that, and it will reject it. And that's why you need to make sure that you have enough resolution so that you can make sure that at each time step, uh, it records a value that's explicitly increasing. All right, with that, in the next video, I'll show you how to bring that vector file into Cadence and run it through an amplifier.